қағазға жазғаным жырған емес. Written on white paper is never mere poetry. It's the very essence of life, a fate from above. I have known the author of this lines, Galim Shailubayev, for a very long time, from a young age. There are books signed by Galim in my collection. His poems are moving. They speak to the soul, so he always has a lot of admirers. He's a spiritual teacher for those who seek for their own path in a challenging world of literature. He's a unique poet, lyrical, and has a deep personality. Once he has said, a poet is his poetry, and his poetry is the poet. Works of Galamara are well known in the country. For example, his writings, such as Gulmira, the girl from Kurchum and the girl with a bag on her back. Mahpal Musa is a poet, member of the Union of Writers and Journalists of Kazakhstan. She is the winner of Jansagurov and Makhataev Republican contests. Apart from this, she won the first prize of the Republican Altan Tobulghe contest, organized by the foundation of Kazakhstan's first president. Also, Mahpal is a winner of a hundred new faces of Kazakhstan project. A nation that doesn't possess a solid tradition of art and literature will never become great. So I thought, who among our writers have always spoken about the historical path of our people? I thought for a bit. Among all these writers, Galim Zhailubayev and his works stand out prominently. His writings dedicated to those who have experienced all the horrors and consequences of testing at a nuclear test site are close to my heart. Especially his orphaned fowl, in the year when the Proton fell, Flight of Saigas verses, and the poem about the victims of political repressions, the Black Shawl. The pages of our history, the truth of our society, these are the topics that only a mature and intelligent author can think of. These works are a tribute to the past and a lesson for the future. All the poet's works are extremely relevant, and the author was the first to write his question mark poem during the pandemic. Many of his works, such as Black Shawl, White Chins, and Song of Sulubai, were translated into different languages. Kalim Zhailubayev is a poet who was born and raised in the village of Jenis of the Janarka district of the Karganday region. For many years, he worked as a shepherd and a herder in his native lands. He graduated from the Kazakh Institute of Management and Economics with a degree in sociology. He worked in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, then in different mass media, in the Kazakh literature newspaper and the Kazakh radio. Also, he held several senior positions in the Writers' Union. Today, he works as the chief editor of the literary magazine Zhuldas. His poetry has been translated into foreign languages more than once. He's the winner of the Elash Prize, the owner of the Sergei Yesenin Gold Medal, and the winner of the International Community of Writing Unions Prize. I read the Black Shaw poem written by Ghalamara in one breath. When I talked to the poet, I was surprised to learn that he wrote his work in just four days. Almost immediately was translated into Russian and published in two languages. A little bit later, due to its particular popularity, the work was translated into another 14 languages and published. It was awarded by the fourth Eurasian literary competition held in Sweden and organized by the Creative Guild platform and the famous British publishing house. There his work came third in the poetry category. Within the framework of the Modern Kazakh Culture Project, an anthology of Kazakh literature was published in several languages. The works of 60 of our domestic authors have been translated into six languages and published by the best publishing houses. These books have been distributed among more than 90 libraries and educational institutions on five continents. At Indiana State University in the U.S., Three Strings Book Publishing House published Phyllis Bekasimkulov's novel Taltus, or A Life at Noon, in English. This novel was the first Kazakh work in the last 30-40 years published at the expense of foreign publishers. Recently, the famous novel Game of Thrones, written by the American screenwriter and author George Martin, was translated into Kazakh and published under the title Takhtar Talasa. So thanks to the talented translator Abish Abdeldinov and his colleagues, Kazakh readers got the opportunity to read the world-famous bestseller in their native language. Of course, the translation of such a big, 770 pages long work was very challenging for our translators. 
First, I read the poem and then I watched the play in the theater. It impressed me enormously. As a matter of fact, the genre of the black shawl is a requiem. In the usual sense, a requiem is a morning march. More specifically, it's a musical piece of tragic content, a mass performed by the choir. But in this case, it's a new rhythm, and the ending is astonishing. The black shawl is a symbol of the eternal suffering of the Kazakh people, the seal of continuing tragedies, deaths, hardships, torments, and it's the symbol of a better life. There was a tradition among the Kazakh people. If some bad luck came to the house, then the yurt of the deceased was decorated with a black shawl. And the poem itself has become a kind of black mark, reflecting the black spots of the history of the people, forcing mankind to think. The poet possesses the strong connection to the best human qualities, such as nobility and dignity. In his works, he strives to reflect the perfect sides of people, honesty, humanity, modesty, and everything that radiates light. The tough question that is posed in this writing is the following. What does the younger generation know about the past? This is what haunts me. The hardships of the past did not pass unnoticed for the Karagandi region. Karlak was one of the largest concentration camps. It was also called the Step Hell, a place where injustice and tragedy once were flourishing. The poem consists of several parts. Karaganda Camp, Karla Gates, Ahmedjan Sarmantayola's Key, Article 58, Girls Cry, Painting of Irina Borkman, Interrupted Journey, Mommy's Cemetery, Stone and Foot, The Black Book of Karla, and Three Knocks. Each of them consists of different stories that complement each other and create an overall picture of those tragic years. The Karaganda labor camp Karlak was opened on December 19, 1931 by a decision of the Council of People's Commissars. Among the 61 camps in the structure of the Glock archipelago, Karlak ranked 8 in the number of prisoners. From 1931 to 1956, 1 1.5 million people were held prisoners in the camp. All of them were victims of the Stalinist policy of genocide. Karlak was closed on July 27, 1959. We simply don't have enough airtime to fully analyze the content and meaning of the poem, but on some of its parts we can focus more properly. For example, the girl's cry part starts with the following lines. They deprive them of their proud treat and doomed to torment. Like a crow, they fly over our sisters. There, right by the Jalanash Kul, there was a camp called Alger. The Kazakhs called it the girl's cry. Alger. According to the will of the Stalinist policy, relatives and friends of those who were considered the so-called enemies of the people were imprisoned in Alger, which was then called as the Akmolinsk camp of the wives of the traitors of the motherland. Among them were the wives of prominent figures of Kazakhstan, genuine patriots of their land, Sekin Sifulin, Bimbet Mailin, Duraraskulov, Jumat Shanin. A little later, the wives of Zhurgenov, the team of Sadvakasov Mindeshev, were also kept here. In the prison of Alger, these women, representatives of the intelligentsia, suffered many hardships and difficulties. Many of them found their death here. The poem reads, Like a boat nailed to a sandy and dead shore, your fate is just like time that slipped into oblivion, and the earth mourns you spreading her braids in the camp of Alger. Yeah. In terrible conditions, the wife of Sekin, Gulbahram, lived for years, as well as the wife of Bimbiet, Guljamal. They went through all circles of hell, all hardships and difficulties. The mother of the great ballerina Maya Plisetska, Rachel Plisetska, was serving her term here. Our poet wrote about this the following. Human conscience, do you even understand? Rachel Plisetska and Guljamal, Bimbet's wife, Durari Skulov's better half, were here too. The poem spells out the whole tragedy of life of those people very clearly. 
wives, educated and self-sufficient ladies were placed in inhumane, degrading conditions, deprived of everything, communication with relatives, husbands, and the camp became their own black shawl. It's impossible to read the part of the poem called Mommy's Cemetery and hold your tears. Explaining this verse as the poet has wrote the following. In this grave, children and women, prisoners of the Karlak, were buried. The cemetery is located in the village of Abai, Karagande region, near Jartas. The children of the enemies of the people were also serving time in Karlak. Newborn babies were taken away from their mothers and handed over to the children's factory. It was the same camp, the same shift, the same gate, the same barbed wire, and the same barracks around the perimeter. There were seven such establishments in Karlak. According to archival data, mortality was high there. Only a few kids survived. For example, in 1941, 1944, 924 children died, and in the period between 1950 to 1952, 1,130 babies died. The 20th century brought a lot of suffering and hardships to the people. And after all, atrocities were committed not by the will of someone from heaven, but by the hands of man himself. The scale of these atrocities is simply astounding. My song walks somewhere on the green grass, and it seems I know everyone in person at the Mommy Cemetery, and I even hear the cry and laughter in silence. The poet is very sensitive when it comes to human misfortune. His soul is gentle, and his thoughts are deep. It is only him who was able to hear the laughter of unjustly killed babies and the sounds of the wind and the steppe grass. The poem, like a film reel, unfolds the affairs of bygone years, forcing us to relieve the experience in a new way. And the stone and food part gives us hope and sets an example for future generations. One winter morning we were carrying armful of reeds from Lake Jalanash. After some time, old people and children appeared on the lake shore, and, on the command of the elders, they began throwing stones at us. The guards began to laugh out loud, saying, you see, they don't like you in Moscow and they don't even like you here too. Female prisoners were furious. Is this the way to bring up your children? I tripped over the stones and when I fell next to it, I smelled milk and cheese. I took a small stone and put it in my mouth and it seemed very tasty to me. I collected these pebbles and brought them to our hut. There were several female Kazakh prisoners. They said it was court, sun-dried salted cottage cheese. They put all their kindness into the stone, to the stone that was thrown at the prisoners, only the stone was not a stone at all. It was a court, the food of nomad Kazakhs, and they shared that meal generously to help the prisoners survive. With these lines, the poet shows how generous the common steppe dwellers were when they were trying to help the prisoners. The most delicious stone on earth the one thrown at the women of Karlak. The stone that Gertrude described in her letters, named as the stone of peace and goodness, the stone of Kazakh friendship and support. You can call the poet Galim Zhailobayev a happy person. He infinitely loves his people and his land, glorifying it in his works. In the works of the poet, there is little pathos, but a lot of the bitter truth of life. And the earth, just like man, has its own sad thoughts, its own sadness, the poet says. Only thoughts can be heavier than words. He describes the tragedies of his land with a hope for a better future, recalls sad and difficult times, so that this does not happen again. This is the true mission of the poet, and it's something he has accomplished in the Black Shawl poem.